Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn about RAID. What is RAID? Why it is required in our system? And what are the different levels of RAID? So let us start with the basic concept of RAID. So first of all, the full form of RAID is redundant array of independent disk. Now, if we wants to define RAID, then RAID is nothing but a data storage virtualization technology in which more than one physical disk drive are combined into a single logical unit for the purpose of data redundancy to improve the performance and for the large storage capacity or for all. So here, if we want to simply define the RAID, then it is nothing but a group of physical disk drive for the purpose of data redundancy, performance improvement as well as large storage capacity. As per the requirement of redundancy and performance, your data is di distributed across the drives in a different way that is simply known as RAID levels. And all the RAID levels have the property that the data are distributed over the drives to allow parallel processing or parallel operation. There are seven levels of RAID. So let us see each and every level one by one. So let us start with first level that is RAID 0. This one is the figure for RAID 0. In RAID 0, more than one physical drives are combined into single logical unit so in this case we have combined two disk drive into single logical unit and both of these drive are connected with each other this one is disk one this one is disk two so in RAID 0 your data or we can say your file is split into the block of data and each and every block are striped or we can say placed across the disk in the system so here we are having two disks block one is placed over here in disk one again block two is placed over here in disk two again block three is placed over here in disk one again block four is placed over here in disk two so all the odd blocks are placed in disk one and all the even blocks are placed in disk two so in the diagram to the right the odd blocks are placed in disk one and even blocks are placed on disk 2. Now let us move further. What are the advantages and disadvantages of RAID 0? First one is it is easy to implement and no parity calculation overhead is involved. Here the parity calculation is required to find out whether your data is correct or not. We will see in next slides and it provides good performance by spreading the load across many drives means here your data is spread across the drives so load is also spread across the drives so you will be getting good performance as compared to other and it provides no redundancy or error detection not true rate right? because there is no fault tolerance if there is problem in one drive then all the other drives will be lost so it's not true rate right? after certain amount of drives the performance does not increase significantly means if the number of drives will increase then after certain amount of drives the performance will not increase significantly and it requires minimum two drive to implement you cannot implement this rate on a single drive next move for the raid one here structure is like same disk one disk two but here we have given as equals to myth both of these drive have the same data so a complete file is stored on a single drive your entire data is stored in single drive but a second disk contains the exact copy of the file means this drive contains the carbon copy of disk drive means your data is placed in two different drives as the same data so it provides complete redundancy of data your data is completely redundant here whatever the data that is placed over here in disk 1 the same data is placed over here in disk 2 means this disk is carbon copy of this disk the disk disk 1 read performance can be improved means you can read from any drive because the data is same same file data can be read in parallel write performance supports means if you write in this block then this block must be updated at the same time that's why right performance will suffer you need to perform two time write operation because there is a carbon copy so must write the data out twice if you write in this block then you must have to write in this block also now next move further what are the advantages of raid one 
it's a most expensive RAID implementation because you require two disks to store the data same data it requires twice as much storage space means if you require 40 gb space then you require 80 gb of hard disk in case a drive fail data do not have to be rebuilt they just have to be copied to replace the drive means if any drive is failed then no need to rebuild the data you have to just copy data from other drive where your copy is placed the main disadvantage is that the effective storage capacity is only half of the total drive capacity because all the data get written twice means if you are having 80 gb of hard disk then you can only use 40 gb of space because the carbon copy is made in RAID 1 next move further RAID 2 this one is the figure for RAID 2 we have seven drives and we have combined seven drive into a single logical unit in RAID 2 here a bit level comes in picture so in RAID 2 it stripes data at bit level rather than a block level with a dedicated humming code parity it uses ECC that is error correcting code to monitor correctness of information on the hard disk and a parity disk is then used to reconstruct the corrupted or lost data so here disk 0 contain data disk 1 contain data disk 2 contain data and disk 3 contain data whereas in disk 4 5 and 6 we have parity that is c parity 1 c parity 2 c parity 3 d parity 3 b parity 3 so this parity bit is used as a ECC that is error correcting code to monitor the correctness of information on the disk. So here parity disk is used to reconstruct the corrupted or we can say lost data. So these three are nothing but a parity disk to construct or we can say reconstruct the corrupted or lost data from these four hard disks. So here we have seven drives first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh so whatever the data that is divided into two part first four bit that is nibble then adding humming code to each one of the form seven bit word that is first second and fourth bit were nothing but a parity bit and this parity bit is used to reconstruct the corrupted data in this red level two each of the seven drives need to be synchronized in terms of arm position and rotation position and then it would be possible to write the 7 bit humming coded word over the 7 drives. So, in RAID level 2, all the 7 drives must be synchronized. Here, losing one drive did not cause problem, which can be handled by humming code on the fly. It means if out of 7 drive, if the one drive is damaged, then our data cannot be lost. Big problem is performance. Must have to read data plus ECC code from the other disk for a write must have to modify data as well as ECC and parity disk so it requires more time so performance is degraded then after RAID 3 this one is the figure for RAID 3 disk 1, disk 2, disk 3 and disk 4 this technique uses stripping and dedicate one drive for storing the parity information in the RAID 2 we have already seen that our parity is also distributed over different drive but in RAID 3, here disk 4 is the dedicated for parity information to store the information about parity. So here disk 4 is nothing but a parity disk and these 3 disk is for storing to store the data. Here the single parity bit is computed for each data word and returned to a parity drive. So here in RAID 3, only a single parity bit is computed and that single parity bit is stored over here in disk 4. The embedded ECC information is used to detect the error. As in RAID level 2, the drive must be exactly synchronized. So here also all these four drives must be synchronized as we have already seen in RAID 2. Next one for the RAID 4. Figure is like this, we have four disk, disk 0, 1, 2 and 3. This level uses large stripe which means you can read record from any single drive out of these three drive they do not require synchronize of drive means in RAID 4 all these four drives may not be synchronized means it is not required to synchronize all the drives in RAID 4 now RAID 4 is like a RAID level 0 with strip for strip parity return onto an extra drive for example if each drive is k byte long 
all the stripe are exclusive odd together resulting in a parity stripe k byte long if a drive crashes in between then the lost byte can be recomputed from the parity drive by reading the entire set of drives and this design protects against the loss of drive but the performance poorly for a small updates if one sector is changed it is necessary to read all the drive in order to recalculate the parity so if you wants to change in any sector then you must have to recalculate the parity every time so here the performance is poor and it creates a heavy load on parity drive because there is only one drive for a parity next move for the raid 5 structure is like this this 0 1 2 3 this level is based on block level stripping with a parity and the parity information is also stripped across each drive here the parity is over here parity is over here parity is over here so here parity is also distributed over the different drives as with red level 4 there is a heavy load in parity drive it may become bottleneck but this bottleneck can be eliminated in red level 5 by distributing the parity bit uniformly over all the drives here we are distributing our parity bits over a different drive so bottleneck will never occur thank you very much